So hey guys, and here we are for the 33rd part in this F1 Manager Minardi Manager career mode, where we're trying to take Minardi to be the best and quickest team around. And now one thing I did notice just before I started recording, is in terms of the chassis development, it's apparently due to be finished on the 15th of January. Which means, at the minute, I'd stand to get sacked, so I'm going to double the amount of designers working on that, just to ensure that they build the chassis before the 31st of December this year so I won't get sacked because definitely when they started developing it the estimated finish wasn't in 2001 but it's moved over to that but I've fixed that now but anyway we've got the Japanese Grand Prix yes of course I'm recording this on the Friday before the real life 2015 Japanese Grand Prix and I've just recorded the qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix in my F1 2015 series so basically apparently all the Japanese Grand Prix, the real life one, the F1 2015 one and the F1 manager one have all coincided so that's a weird one but yep Suzuka fantastic track I love it but it's not going to play too much to the strengths of our car because obviously our car's got a very quick engine and not a decent chassis and you kind of want it the other way round for Suzuka to be honest um, but this is kind of, this race is nothing really to play for, to be honest, um, nothing major anyway, because Michael Schumacher has already won the Drivers' Championship by a long, long way, um, and the Constructors' Championship, Ferrari have already won that as well, but we are still battling with Williams for third, it's unlikely we'll fall behind Benetton, I don't know if it's possible actually, um, no, okay, Benetton could beat us, but I doubt that's going to happen, so really it's a battle theoretically for the, um, for the top four between, or for the second, third and fourth between Minardi, Williams and Benetton. So we'll have to see how that plays out, but it's really Williams is the only team we've really got to worry out for. Um, but yeah, I think there's a long time, yeah, there's a long time between the Italian Grand Prix, which you just did, and the Japanese Grand Prix a month. So we've got to see if any news comes in, and there's a lot of time for news to come in, so let's see if it does. Okay, so something has come in. It's from Neil Oatley. He's told us he's developed the sixth, the sixth model of barge boards. I, I know I've said it time and time again, but Neil Oatley, he's such an improvement on our previous designer, Gabriel Chidozzi, because we never got up to the sixth model of barge boards, I don't think. We can't have done. And he's done it with two races to go. It's also something to note, well, we've got to hope we manufacture enough of these in time, but... Something to note is how we developed the sixth model of front wing and rear wing last time out, but we didn't manufacture enough to be able to use it for the Italian Grand Prix. Um, so if we manufacture enough in time, which we should easily do, if we do them well, we'll be able to use them this race and um, the Japanese Grand Prix for the first time. And, and it'll be the same story for the barge boards if they can manufacture enough in time. But anyway, I'll see if we've got any more news. Okay, so we have got some news, in fact. This is this is interesting. Owen Green is linked to going to Ferrari. Now, I'm pretty certain the only driver roles left this season is the test driver role for Ferrari and the test driver role for BAR. I think all the other ones are taken, so we don't have to worry about Owen Green suddenly um, going and, you know, and replacing Neil McEwen, because that's Heinz Howard Frentzen who's going to be replacing Neil McEwen, but Owen Green amazingly could be going to Ferrari, that'd be staggering, obviously he's our current test driver, we picked him up, we've used him once, and to be fair he was quite decent actually in that pre-season test we used him in, and now, what well, is if he does go to Ferrari it essentially would be a straight swap because we've taken Owen Green from, no we've taken Luca Padoa from Ferrari, and now Ferrari might take Owen Green and really Ferrari just cannot seem to draw themselves away from EA employees. They seem to love having an EA employee with them. I don't know why, but it just seems to be what they want, which is a bit strange. But yeah, I'll see if there's any more news. Okay, so here we are the day before the Grand Prix weekend is going to start. And there's no more news, apart from obviously... Neil Oatley's barge boards and the room of Owen Green going to Ferrari. We haven't had anything else where there's loads of sponsorship news, but that was it really. And yeah, the Japanese Grand Prix, as I said earlier on, it doesn't play to our car's strengths, 
but we can still do well here if you know if we get some retirements like a Ferrari retirement that goes in our favor and then we can move up a few places maybe take a podium I'd be happy with a podium but one thing I do quickly want to say is I have recorded this race before and unfortunately the commentary went a bit wrong so I'm having to re-record it now but and I'm normally this isn't the first time I've re-recorded an episode in this series Belgium I've had to do it loads of times because the game keeps on crashing but there was one particular moment which means I have to show you this clip. Normally I don't mention when I re-record an episode, but this time I have to show you this clip from the last time I recorded it because this was spellbinding. Just look how De La Rosa retires at the start of the race. This is amazing. Pedro De La Rosa. Spin, spin, spin. So as you can see here, he's just coming down the straight, you know, doing his thing, and then suddenly rolls over. I mean, I, I don't really, I can't really explain that. I don't know how he rolled over, but that's the most stylish retirement I think we've seen this series. So congrats to De La Rosa there. Anyway, moving on from that retirement, which was genuinely hilarious. It was, it was by far and away the most interesting thing that happened last episode was De La Rosa's retirement. But anyway, moving on to this episode, this time we record the Japanese Grand Prix. Let's see what can happen here and see if we can get any excitement which even matches that retirement. Okay, so here we are at the end of practice and there are definitely some weird results here. I mean, look, Michael Schumacher's fastest, that's not weird, but five seconds ahead, or just under five seconds ahead of his nearest competitor, which is Takaki, which is staggering to be honest. Fizzy Keller's third, I guess that's not too big of a surprise considering McLaren have, for the rest of this season, got the best chassis on the grid. And Ralph Schumacher in fourth. Anything else particularly interesting? Well, Neil McEwen's just ahead of us, but of course, we do still have some more time to find um, lighter fuel loads, telling our drivers to push. We have still got some more time to find from both Damon Hill and Sardo, of which Damon Hill was the quickest this session, so that's an interesting one. Damon Hill, again, coming into form right at the end of the season, weirdly. Um, and then, Bruins Barrichello in the Jordan last. Now, how the mighty have fallen, because remember at Imola, where the Jordans were quicker than us, and we just about held out for a race win from them. Jordans were on top of the world at the start of the season, and just as the season's gone on, they've just fallen more and more off the pace, and now Barrichello's in last, so what's going on there? Um, Zanardi... 18th, well he has been shocking this season, he was he was quite poor last season, he's been really poor this season, you know he can't even compare to Alexander Wurtz, so Zanardi's had a shocker, um, and the three cars not to finish, or not to complete lap times, are both arrows obviously, they ran out of engines a couple of races ago, and the other Stewart of Jarno Trulli, so that's a bit of an interesting one, we'll have to see whether that's just a blip or whether he has run out of engines, because if Trulli doesn't complete the session, then, well, we'll have three cars which won't be finishing the second-to-last race. God knows how many won't finish the last race at this rate. But anyway, let's just move on to the qualifying reports. So qualifying here around Suzuka has just ended, and there are quite a few changes from free practice, so let's go through them. One change is that Michael Schumacher was about two seconds a lap slower than he was in practice, but he was still able to get pole position for the 15th time this season, and that means he's only one pole position away from getting pole at every single race this season. Both Minardis line up second and third with Mika Sala the quickest of the two, for by no means the first time this season but there was only half a tenth in it between the two Minardi drivers, so the team battle was really heating up come the end of the season. Ralph Schumacher in the Williams, which is a rival constructor for Minardi this season, is in fourth, with both McLarens fifth and sixth, with Giancarlo Fisichella in fifth and Johnny Herbert in sixth. Takaki, who was second in practice, wasn't able to set a time anywhere near that as he was down in seventh, with Coulthard and Lacey 8th and 9th. Irvine in the only Stewart to complete a lap was 10th with Neil McEwen 11th. Frenson was 12th, Jacques Villeneuve 13th, Wurtz 14th, Diniz 15th, Rubens Barrichello who was the slowest in practice 
wasn't quite the slowest this time, but has still fallen off dramatically from where the Jordan was earlier on this season, and he is also quite a way behind his teammate Heinz Howard Frensen. The other BAR of Laurent Redon is 17th with Ricardo Zonta 18th, and Alessandro Zanardi was the slowest car to complete a lap in 19th. The cars not to complete a lap time were both arrows who, as we know from the last race, have run out of engines and so won't be competing any further this season. And the other car not to set a lap time was the other steward of Jarno Trulli. Now Jarno Trulli has had quite an unlucky season this season, but with his team running out of engines already, and with him not being able to set a lap in practice or qualifying, it means his season is also officially over, unless he can start tomorrow's race. So hey guys, those were the qualifying results, and as you can see, we've calculated out the race fuel strategy. Um, obviously calculated the fuel up myself. But anyway, the qualifying results bring up some issues about engines. Obviously Stuart have run out of engines, and Arrows obviously have. And we're in an engine dilemma ourselves, because if you look at the engines, we've only got one fourth model left, and one third model left. We've got nine second models, ten first models. So we're not going to run out of engines, but we're running low on our more high performance engines. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give Damon Hill the fourth model engine and Mika Salo the third model engine. Now this may seem weird but obviously we know last time out we were going to have a Minardi 1-2 and Damon Hill was going to take second place. That was going to be you know fantastic for him but the suspension gave way through no fault of anyone's really. I don't know how that happened. The suspension just gave way and it cost him a second place and generally he has been quite an unlucky driver this season, as well as the fact that he's a British driver, and with me being British myself, I do prefer him over Mikasalo, only because he's British, I love Mikasalo as well, but I prefer Damon Hill purely because he's British, so I'm going to prioritise the Brits over the Finnish guy, this may be stupid because Mikasalo is technically battling for second in the Drivers' Championship, but that's kind of not really much to play for, so... We'll just, we'll just move away from that, but we'll give Damon Hill the fourth model because I prefer him as a driver because he's British and because, well, more importantly, because he was screwed over last time out, you know, he lost second place, so he was definitely screwed over there. And I just can't feel sorry for him, so we're going to make it up to him by giving him the performance advantage this race. And apparently we've given him a new chassis which we manufactured. Didn't even realise that. Not like I think chassis wear means anything, to be honest. I don't know, but yeah, that's that, done the race strategy, let's head on to the start of the race. So here we are, as you can see on the start, Damon Hill, it says he's in first, he's not, he'll be in third actually, of course, um, just behind Salo and Michael Schumacher. And we've got a, a start, I was going to say a decent start, it's impossible to say really, because you don't get varying starts um, in this game. It's all just the same, and, oh well, yeah, everybody gets off in you know, the formulaic, start formulaic? Is that the right way of describing it? I don't know. Regardless, Michael Schumacher is out in first. He's going to pull away. Well, he already has pulled away quite substantially. Both Minardis are second and third. De La Rosa, yes, he's retiring. Is he going to roll over? Please tell me he's going to roll over again. That was so funny. My reaction last time was just, oh, no, gone off into the barrier? No. Going to stop just before the barrier. Yarno Trulli, yep, yeah, Yarno Trulli's run out of engines. That is tragic for the Stewart team, and obviously he's been a really unlucky driver this season. And now, we're not even going to be able to see him retire. No, well, there you go, there he is in the gravel. Mark Genet in the arrows, okay. How does he retire? Does he roll over? No, but he's just, the car suddenly snapped and went sideways, okay. Well... There you go, those are the three retirements, they're out. Okay, now we can worry about our race again. So, no car rolled over, but that's... I had to show you that, guys, that rollover clip, because I've never seen a car roll over in the game before, and it was just so hilarious. But anyway, both cars running second and third. We seem to be pulling... No, I was about to say we seem to be pulling away from Ralph Schumacher. Look at the gap between that Jordan and the Ferrari. God. As I was saying, the Jordans really have fallen off in terms of pace. They were... Phenomenal at the start of the season, and then just ever since kind of Imola or a couple of races after that, they just slowly went off. 
Now, what's Ralph Schumacher doing? Don't tell me he's going to try and get past us, is he? No, but he's also coming into threat for both McLarens. No, he has got past. He has got past Damon Hill. Okay, so once we finish watching the first lap, I'm going to tell Damon Hill to push, as well as make a solo, actually, because Ralph Schumacher is on the hunt and he's able to get past us, so that's quite worrying. Anyway, sorry about that, just having a drink there. Um, Yona truly so well, Yona Trulli's in last. I don't know why. De La Rosa was the first one to retire, so technically, Yona truly did a few more feats, so he should be ahead of De La Rosa. Not like it really matters at the end of the day. Um, Pedro Diniz in the Pros 15th. Why are we looking at Diniz? I don't care about Pedro Diniz and where he is. So it's six seconds behind Michael Schumacher already. Well, okay. So, tell both of our drivers to push, especially if Damon Hill's got the more powerful engine. You know, we can't need him to um, be ahead of Raul Schumacher yet. We'll tell him to push for five laps. The old five lap push stint is what I usually do. Where's Raul Schumacher gone? Dan's sick. Uh, Frenton's out of an engine failure. Okay, Neil McEwen's siding his way through. Now, when Neil McEwen actually drives well, it's impossible to defend from him because. When he actually drives well, he's in, you know, the dominant car. It's impossible to defend from him. But, as we know, his consistency and race pace is all over the place, so... He'll probably be nowhere in a few laps' time. We have to hope so, anyway. Um, Jacques Villeneuve's out with a driver error. At least he's out of a driver error. Fizzy Keller's got past us. Um, Neil McEwen's down behind us. Okay, I told you Neil McEwen's consistency is all over the place. Now he's back past us. Okay, Fizzy Keller seems to have pulled off um, into distance quite a bit. Okay, I just thought I thought Michael Schumacher retired then. But no, well, Diniz is out of an engine failure. Eddie Irvine's out of a suspension failure. So if you look on the positive, that has saved his engine for the Malaysian Grand Prix. But it'll probably break in practice of qualifying anyway. Um, so I don't feel I have to worry about... Well, I don't know why... <sighs> Why Stuart even went for Persia engines in the first place is beyond me. And now everybody's siving past us. Okay, that's quite worrying. Fizzy Keller's out of an engine failure. Okay, he was actually doing quite well this race. That's one rival that's retired. Wurtz is out of an engine failure. Herbert's out of an engine failure. Lots of cars are out. Okay. Michael Schumacher, we're not going to catch him. Neil McEwen, we're not going to catch him. Because when he actually does well, you can't catch him. Ralph Schumacher and Damon... Uh, Ralph Schumacher and David Coulthard seem to be way ahead, actually. Well, Ralph Schumacher, I don't know. I don't want to push midway through the race. Come the end of the race, I might. But anyway, it, judging by the amount of cars that have retired already, they may well retire by the end of the race. And we got past David Coulthard. Okay. Right now, David... Uh, okay, Takaki separated both Minardis. Okay. Well, this race has got dull all of a sudden, hasn't it? There were loads of retirements in the first 24 laps, and now look, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't even know what to say. Uh, it's, okay, Zonta's had driver error. Okay, that's not that interesting. Um, Right, I give it a few more laps. I'll tell... Screw it. I'll just tell my drivers to push for the rest of the race. With 30 seconds behind Coulthard. Okay, but Salo's only four seconds behind Takaki. Okay, we can definitely push for that. Hopefully, some we'll get some more retirements on the drivers further ahead. Okay, weapons are fourth and fifth. Uh, Ralph Schumacher is a suspension failure. Okay, that's going to help us. Obviously, we've all been promoted to the place because of Ralph Schumacher going out. Radon's out um, with an engine failure. Okay. But Michael Schumacher looks like he's going to win. Michael Schumacher's won. Neil McEwen is in second. Okay, Neil McEwen's done well. David Coulthard third. There you go. That's why I've signed David Coulthard for next season. Because he, in the Benetton, which we know is not a good car, is able to make it finish third. Okay, Damon Hill did, was actually catching up to David Coulthard in the end. But we got fourth and fifth. Okay, so that means we've actually gained points. Because our main rivals in the Constructors' Championship at the minute are Williams and also arguably Benetton. Benetton have only just outscored us. No, they haven't actually, no. No, we outscored them by one point, actually. We've outscored Williams by four points. And, yeah, so generally things are looking good for the Constructors' Championship. Only six drivers finished in the end. 
Okay, so R Barrichello retired right at the end. And apparently Zanardi is ahead of Barrichello. Well, even though Zanardi retired on lap 49 and Barrichello on lap 50. Whatever, that doesn't matter. But there's a lot of engine failures there, actually. That might have a knock-on effect for the next race in Malaysia. We might see, because look, well, when Jordan have had... Do they have two engine failures? No, only one. But Prost with their Peugeot, God, that's that's not what they wanted. Prost with a Peugeot engine failure. We know Stuart have one of Peugeot engines. That means Prost can't be too far behind unless there's massive French bias there. But anyway, only six drivers finished. So Michael Schumacher first, Neil McEwen second, David Coulthard third, Damon Hill in fourth, Mika Salo fifth, and Takaki sixth. One of, the few, one of the few times, actually, we've seen Damon Hill beat Mika Salo, but obviously he did have... The advantage in engine performance, so... But I think that's sort of made up for Damon Hill's... Well, it hasn't, actually, but it's helped to make up for Damon Hill's retirement last time out in Italy, which cost him a second place, six points. That's kind of... Um, that's tragic. Ferrari dominate at Japan. Shouldn't that be in Japan? Well, actually, no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. That reminds me, speaking of typing errors, or typos... If I dominate at Japan, that's a great one. But I got a comment from Adam Smith, who's a regular commenter on my videos. You'll see a comment up now. Well, he's a regular commenter on the F1 Manager series anyway. And he says, EA couldn't spell Stephen Watson's name right. And, I'm, you know, Stephen Watson, who's confirmed for Williams next year, they, they spelt the wrong spelling of Stephen, which is fair enough. I've spelt the wrong Stephen before. But, you know, nice, nice checking by EA on their games. There's also, he also notes, and it's a very good point actually, by the way, it's peculiar that the Williams driver number one seems to always come from Arrows, so Mazzucane or Gene could be going to Williams soon, because obviously Mazzucane is their test driver, he moved from Minardi to Arrows, and Gene is their driver two, who obviously moved again from Minardi to Arrows, so we could see Gene or Mazzucane at Williams in 2002, which I'd be Extremely happy, especially if it was Mazzucane. I'd be extremely happy to see him at Williams. One and a half million prize money, okay, so... We still do the right there. Look, that's why we couldn't fend off Neil McEwen when he when he's doing well. That This is why we couldn't fend him off. You know, Fry have got... Apparently they got the best chassis. I thought that was McLaren, but whatever. And they got the best suspension, barge boards, front wings, rear wings, and side pods. That's why when Neil McEwen actually decides to perform, it's impossible to hold him off. Um, and yeah, so next time it's the Malaysian Grand Prix, but because the la because the next episode is the last episode in this season, I'm going to go through the news leading up to that race this time, so then next episode, because next episode I'm doing our farewells, you know, traditional end of season farewells, and you know, looking back over the season, so I'm going to do the news now, and then, so next episode you'll just have the race, and then you know, the commemorations and commiserations to all those who didn't do well. Mike Gascoigne, I'm looking at you. You didn't do well this season. But anyway, yeah, let's see if there's any news between now and the Malaysian Grand Prix. Okay, so something. Neil McEwen has made new suspensions and side pods. I don't even know why I should bother manufacturing these, because I'm a million percent certain that we're not going to manufacture four of these in time for... The Malaysian Grand Prix, we can manufacture two, but obviously, if you only make two, you can only use them in practice or qualifying, or if you use them in the race, it, it makes a change in setup, and basically, unless you have four, or three actually, you could work with three, it doesn't work, it's not a viable solution, but it still shows Neil Oatley, fantastic designer, he's been working his socks off to make so many new versions of parts in, well, I mean, this is only October still, so... In only 10 months. Wow. Anyway. I don't even know if I should buy cutting away. Because I think we'll just get more sponsor news. Okay, so yeah, there was absolutely no more news there. Absolutely none. So. Malaysian Grand Prix. Well, we've still got some news to clear out, obviously. What's happening to BAR's test driver and Ferrari's test driver. As well as, I think, a couple of other things. And obviously we're going to do our, you know, 
We're going to say goodbye to those who are leaving us, obviously. Um, Mike Gascoigne is leaving us, Damon Hill, Mick Asalo, and Owen Green are all going to be leaving us at the end of the season. We'll say our goodbyes to them um, at the end of the next episode, which obviously could be the goodbye episode for this series, or for this season rather, not this series, but for this season, up until the next season. And yeah, obviously, Malaysian Grand Prix has a lot of good memories for us. Obviously, Luca Badoa briefly set the F1 lap record around this track in the Minardi. So yeah, this track does have a lot of good memories for us because of that reason alone. But as well as the fact this is one of my favourite tracks in the calendar, I do genuinely love Malaysia. And it's the last race of the season. So anything can happen, especially with three cars already that have run out of engines. Could easily be fourth because of Eddie Irvine. May well see more. You know, both Prost might be out because of Peugeot engines. This could be a very exciting race purely for cars not finishing or not even completing a lap. So I'm looking forward to that race on that reason alone. And yeah, I'm looking forward to the race plus the goodbyes to everyone at the end of the next episode. And yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good episode next time. So be sure to stick around for that. So I'll see you then.